He's good. He got it. <laughs> um, determine whether the graph to the right can represent a variable with a normal distribution. Explain your reasoning. If the graph appears to represent a normal distribution, estimate the mean and standard deviation. Great. And who is speaking? Because again, I can't see. I'm, I'm looking at my screen. Michael. Michael, thank you. So remember what we said, the function, the graph cannot be under the x-axis. The area has to be one and no negative percentages or probabilities. So D. No, because the graph crosses the x-axis. Excellent. I agree. Good. OK. Um, I have a question. Yes. So even if it's like a perfect bell-shaped curve and there's like a clear mean and everything, if it crosses the axis, we can't. It's because not. it means that probabilities or percentages are negative. Yes. OK. All right. Thank you. Very good question. So hold on, hold on, everyone. Hold on. So everything here has to be positive. I didn't write it because, and I should have for you, because I mentioned it, but I didn't write it. Um, only positive graph because it's the area. It has to be positive at all times. It can be zero, potentially, but it cannot be anything um, that is negative, right? Because percentages are between uh, zero and one. Oh, okay. that's right. Thank you. Thank you. No, a good point. It was a good point. I should have mentioned that and, uh, you know, written. I should have written it down. Okay. Ready. Next. Uh, question five. Let's take a look at question five. And let me know also who is speaking because my screen, as you see, I can see who is speaking. Uh, Gabe? Yes. Ready. Excellent. Very good pick. Okay, so let's so, so let's talk about this. So let me let me graph it on paper because this is a good Okay, so let's let me graph it on paper first. So we have the height. We have a uniform uh, distribution. The height is 1 divided by 30. And we have uh, the x goes from 0 to 30. And this is time in minutes. And this is also called density, probably the density function. OK. So the probability that the friend is at least 13 minutes late. OK, so let's talk about this first. OK. So what does 13? So this is the between 0 and 30. And let's say I have 10, 10 here. So this is 10, and we're looking at 13. At least 13 minutes late is all this area. OK, so it's all this area. I had to mute um, the sound. So this is the area in question. So the probability for x at least 13. Remember, for continuous random variables, it's quiet. So for continuous random variables, this is the same thing. This does not happen for discrete random variables. It does not happen for binomial. They are not the same. But every time we talk about continuous, either uniform, let's say in our case, or uh, normal, these two are identical. So, so I have to determine this area. So this is base times height. Let me use uppercase. So it's base times height. The base is, can anyone give us this base? How much? 17. Right. So the base is indeed 30 minus 13. And what is the height? 1 over 30. So as you said, 17 divided by 30. And this is exact. I don't know what they want. We're going we're gonna to look and see what they want. So if I divide, what do I get? 17 divided by 30. I get 0. 0.56666. 
and depends on how many digits they want. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Let's do it. Type an integer. I don't have an integer. <laughs> this is not possible. It's probability. How can I how can I have an integer? Or a decimal, round to three decimal places as needed. So 0 0.567. 0 0.567. Okay. Any questions on this problem that we just looked at? Okay, so let's choose another. Can do 14. Yes, let's do 14. Okay, who is speaking? Who would like to read it? Um, I guess I can just read it. Thank you. Okay, both of the graphs represent normal distribution of the mean of 10. Determine which of the two normal distribution, distribution you have the standard deviation of 2 and which of the standard deviation of 3. Explain how you know is which. Okay, very good. So let me stop sharing for a second before we go back and look. So as you see, roughly the graphs were like this. Right. So one is has a higher um, mean, in other words, and uh, the other one is flatter. So the other one is something like this. Exaggerated. So obviously this is the mean of one and this is the mean of the other. Very clearly one has a higher mean than right? Um, it has a, uh, the peak, the peak of the, um, the mean is the same, but the, the peak here, more, more area, right? More area around the mean for the red and less area around the mean for the flatter. Now, obviously the flatter curve has more spread. So for the flatter curve, sigma is greater than for the other one, right? Because for the red, when you look at the red distribution, you see they are more um, clustered around the mean. For the blue distribution in my graph, the graph is more spread. So sigma has to be greater for this. Because now look where the, um, where the, um, uh, inflection points are. So this is the 68% versus this is the 68%. So 68% for the for the red curve are more clustered around the mean, but the 68% around this mean because of the spread of the distribution, so there is higher standard deviation. So that's what I wanted to explain, and now let's decide. So both have the same mean, which is 10, but the probabilities are higher for the red graph than for the blue graph. Okay, more so spread. That, yes, I'm ready. So would that make it seem because graph A doesn't have as much spread, so it would be the standard deviation would be 2? Yes, standard, so graph since graph B, B is a wider graph, it has a greater spread and a longer standard deviation. You said C. Yes, I did. Very good. Awesome. I think it's everyone agrees with that. Great job. Thank you, Adriana. Anyone else can would we, like? Can we do that one? I'm sorry. We, yes, of course. Do yes, yes. Let's do it. Ready? Who would like to participate? You can read it. Yes, please. The empirical rule tells the approximate percentage of the data which falls into certain ranges. Yes. So which distribution does the empirical rule apply? To Good. The yes. A distribution that is skewed?
Oh, did you want me to read the answers too? No, you, so what do you think? The distributions that are skewed have the empirical rule that applies or not? No. No. Do you think binomial distributions? No. No, because they are discrete. Excellent. Uh, do you see, think that discrete random variable distributions? <laughs> Would it, be a, would it just be a normal distribution? Of course, of course, yeah, of course. Who was that? That was Gabe. Yes, I know. <laughs> I wasn't trying to torture anyone, but I just wanted to make sure that everyone understands that this is only for normal. But yes, thank you. Fill in each blank so that the resulting statement is true. Okay, who would like to help with this? I, I can go ahead if nobody else wants to. Okay. Gabe again. So in a normal distribution, approximately, you click on the options. Fall within one uh, standard deviation. Right. Uh, it's 68. Good. Right? And then approximately 95% falls Good. in two standard deviations. And of course, it should be 99.7, so yeah. be very careful. Yeah. Good. Very good. Okay, I think V. Well, Vi, I'm sorry, I would like to do one. Do you want to pick one? Uh, number 17. 17? Yes, 17. Thank you. I would like to return to the other one that we just looked at because it looks interesting, but after 17. Okay, uh, which of the following is a correct uh, interpretation of the area uh, under the graph of a uh, probability and uh, density function for any interval of values of the random variable. Great. Is it um, C? Yes. The area represents the probability that randomly selecting the individual from the population will be. This is what we had. So let me just stop this sh sharing for a second. The probability and also the proportion or percent. Both. The area represents the proportion of the population that is in the interval of those values. Yes, I completely agree. Well done, both of you. So now let's look at what uh, what was that one? Uh, what was the previous one we looked at? Was it six? No. What was the one a minute ago? Uh, we, were, we were at 16 in the last question. Right, but um, it looked interesting. What was it? I think that was 16. You it think? had all the deviation stuff on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Great job. Good. So, an educational. Who would like to uh, work on this with me? With us, everyone. I'll read it. Good. Excellent. Thank you. An educational organization reports that the mean of the mathematics portion of the standardized test is four hundred eighty-seven, with a standard deviation of. 117. Use this to find the values on the accompanying graph. Good. So they want mu, we, they want all the positions, right? Yeah. So what we are going to do is create the same graph, present 487 in the middle, and then determine uh, mu plus and minus one standard deviation, mu plus or minus two standard deviations, and mu plus or minus three standard deviations. So, Alex, will you give us the first one? Uh, Evan will give us the second one. And who would like the third one? Emma. Good, and Emma the third one. Okay, so uh, here, Evan and Alex and Emma. The first one is 604. So you have 487 plus 117 and then minus 117. So you said the first one with plus? 
604. Good, excellent. And minus is 373. Good. Evan? Uh, Evan, are you with us? One last chance. Okay, who would like to give us the second one because Evan is not with us? Can I do it? Yes, please. Okay, so, so the... Sorry. <laughs> it doesn't matter which one, but just tell me which one you want me to put in first. The 253 would be the minus, and then this one would be... Oops, sorry. Seven twenty-one. Good. And the last one, Emma, if you have them. Yep. So uh, three standard deviations below is going to be one thirty-six, and then three standard deviations above is going to be eight thirty-eight. Very good. Awesome. Well done. So let's put them in. You're very powerful. Don't tell me to write something today. Just kidding. Okay, so uh, we have 136. Professor? Yes? Uh, um, I accidentally messed up on the um, first one. That's okay. The minus would be 370. Thank you so much. We all make mistakes. Okay, so 136 to 53, 370. Of course, the mean for 87, uh, 604, 721, and 838. Okay, that's okay. Let's take a look. So, 487. I'm sorry? You said 838, you put a 938. I did put 938. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. So it was at my end. Great. Anything else? Or we do question 19. 19. Who would like to get it started?